Yeah, it's true. More of that later. By now, you know probably about the obscene poster that was placed in a school full of 12 and 13 year olds, graphically depicting two men engaging in oral sex with detailed instructions on how to perform fellatio. And another pamphlet with a caption in large, large letters, if you like to, and then the F word. Now, before you accuse me of homophobia, my criticism has nothing to do with the fact that this material was about gay sex. If it had been a poster graphic depicting how to perform heterosexual sexual activities, it would still be just as inappropriate. Look, sex ed is one thing, but it's not supposed to be skills training. Even the group that printed the material in the first place quickly admitted that it was never intended to be in the classroom, never for classroom education. Now, these posters have been on the wall of this particular class for seven months now, and no other teacher, nor the principal, thought it inappropriate. Remember, this so-called alternative school is located in another school for very young children, as young as JK, and they would go into the class too. Look, it's difficult to believe that the principal didn't see it. If so, what sort of a principal is he? $140,000 a year of public money? Was that well spent, sir? Frankly, this is not unique, and if you have kids in public schools, you will have heard other similar, if not precisely identical, tales. But at least, surely, certainly, once all this is exposed, more sensible people will prevail and common sense will drive out this perversion and indoctrination. So who better to interview than Chris Bolton, the school trustee for the area, and also, apparently, the, the chair of the Toronto District School Board? Okay, perfect. And our very own Karen Lieberman spoke to him and asked, what do you thought? I think we need to have a conversation uh, with the community of Delta, which we will do. Uh, and, uh, and probably we, we should have had a conversation with them beforehand, before the, before the document was, was, uh, was put up. I'm just wondering... Conversation. So, sorry, what conversation? There's right and there's wrong. There's good and bad, appropriate and inappropriate. Children go to school to be taught. They can be challenged, sure, certainly, but, but to sit in a classroom dominated by a large picture of a man performing oral sex and instructions on how to do the bloody thing properly? Karen then asks how this could have happened in the first place. The process is usually that materials are vetted through the, vetted through the principal. Um, when you have people, and we have many young teachers in the system, uh, sometimes things happen. And as I say, I think we, we, he, ourselves, the school, learn from it. Vetted, things happen, young teacher. Oh, good Lord, man. This was there for seven months. Come on. Karen then asked if Bolton thought the material acceptable. I think without, uh, without proper introduction of any materials, this material, I would suggest, is probably a little, uh, is overage. ACT actually suggested that this was adult material. I personally would agree with that. But, you know, one of the things that we try to do with our communities is to be able to judge what it is that they as a community, uh, uh, an adult community, parents uh, n would, would suggest in the school uh, and in the classroom of their children. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're not trying to reflect, but to shape the culture, usually in your own image and according to your own politics and your social ambitions. This is why kids go to anti-government marches, why they support teachers who go on strike, why you pay, don't you, enormous amounts of money for David Suzuki, Stephen Lewis, Justin Trudeau to come in and speak. So, Mr. Politician, what, uh, what would you tell an angry, disappointed, outraged parent? What I am going to do in conjunction with the, with the uh, superintendent of schools is to have a meeting with the families, uh, hear what they have to say, explain sort of what, what the facts of the situation are as we know them now. Uh, the material has been, has been removed. And so then we go forward and say, okay, what do you as the community want? 
Unlike what the conservative members suggested, I would argue that our programs should be reflective of the communities in which they're placed. And without the community's input, I don't think we should be going forward. <laughs> He's talking about Talisa McLeod, a conservative politician who criticized him, and she was completely right. That wasn't an answer at all, and it's entirely typical. And what is happening? I'd like to know what is happening to this teacher who did this? Uh, according to you, he had to have the material vetted, and he didn't, and it's been up there now for seven months. There is an investigation, uh, you know, until the investigation is over, I, 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 I can't say what's going to be happening. Well, I can. He's still being paid with your money, my money, our money at home. This independent filmmaker and uh, they now call them occasional, is it occasional teachers? They used to be substitute teachers. Sorry, this is spin. This is condescending, patronizing spin. I don't believe this went under the radar, actually, but I do believe that there is support for this sort of trash in many activist and senior areas within public education. Not the majority, not the good, hardworking teachers. I'm not saying that, but amongst those who want not to teach kids, but to tell them and to tell you what to do and how to behave. Of course, you've been following the story that we broke. It's interesting how many other networks and, and the newspapers are covering this story and carrying this story, and not all of them actually are revealing where, where the story originated. It, it was us. It was a parent who contacted us and said, did you know there is a, a poster in a classroom? It's been there for seven months. The kids are 11, 12, 13 years old. There are also kids as young as JK in the school. The poster is a very, very explicit graphic photograph of two men having oral sex. There's another poster that says, do you like to, and then there's the F word. And we're frightened of complaining about this because if we do, we think we'll be targeted by the school administration. So they came to us and we made this a story. Now, I've said for several days now, the answer is not to try and deal with one teacher, with one principal, one administrator. The answer is to change the system. We have to provide choice. You're meant to be pro-choice. Isn't that the right thing to be these days? We believe in choice. Give choice in education. Scrap the public system as we know it. That will solve most of these problems. Bob Bowden now joins us from New York. Choice Media. Welcome to you, Senator. Bob, you probably don't know this story. It's only just broken in, in Toronto and the rest of Canada. But it, it's not unique. You've had this in the U.S. as well, where in public schools some perverse material, political material, is introduced, and there's so little that parents can do about it. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. And I've had that indignity as well when we've broken stories and then other media outlets seem to pick it up without uh, proper attribution. So my sympathies in that regard. But yeah, congratulations at the same time on, on breaking it. Yes, I think the mistake, the logical error to make here is to consider this an anecdotal one-off story of like one teacher who did one thing wrong. It is a metaphor for a larger question that there are all kinds of issues that no matter how you answer them, uh, parents, you'll end up alienating a large percentage of parents because they don't agree on how to teach religion or how to teach creationism versus evolution or how to teach global warming or certainly sex ed in all kinds of uh, different ways in terms of what is age appropriate and, and what novels might be age appropriate yeah. for children to read in a literature class. So, yes, I think exactly right. This is a, a good time to talk about school choice and the fact that with choice in every other aspect of our lives, uh, lives when it comes to uh, all, all kinds of ways that we live, why would education be the one area where there is often so little choice? Yeah. Uh, and we hear people re responding to this argument. They will say, well, this is just for, for wealthy people. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's such a misunderstanding. Wealthy people now go to the schools they want to. They send their kids, they either pay for them or they live in an area that is, is very nice and very posh, and the schools are very good indeed. So then they're, they're not going to the inner city ghetto school unless they're rather perverse. So the wealthy will always find a way. We're talking about ordinary people who do want the best choice for their kids, but they can't find it because they're just dismissed and thrown away by the, by the, by the rest of the state. It is a convoluted argument the defenders of the establishment find themselves in, where they say, uh, on the one hand, they'll always defend someone's right to pay for education, and, and uh, because they certainly don't want to question um, their right to choose a school if they're well off enough to do that, uh, or you know, political figures that often uh, pay for private school, and you know, they may be in a big city, that, like for example, Barack Obama, with children in a big city who 
are not about to send his, he's not about to send his kids to uh, public schools in Washington, D.C. They'll always defend that. And yet, uh, when you talk about people without the money for private school, uh, they will say, well, now, in that regard, we defend the public school system, meaning uh, lack of choice, meaning a one-size-fits-all you know, monopoly, if you will, for uh, you know, how to proceed with public education. So I think it's, it's, a, it's really, a, I mean, you could call it, a, to call it a logical conundrum is kind of polite. It's really mm -hmm. hypocrisy, I think, to say that yeah. you know, choice for some and not for others. Well, I think it is. Okay, another one, another canard that's thrown all the time, socialization. If you don't have a public system, we, we, our, our current premier in Ontario, she's now the, the person in charge of, of, of Ontario, she once said when there was just the possibility of giving some money to, to faith communities so they could afford to send their kids to a school of, of their own choice, she said, if you do this, there'll be cars overturned in the street, there'll be fires, there'll be mass rioting and fighting. Now, she's never quite apologized for that, for that vile, grotesque caricature of religious people. But this notion of socialization, unless you educate children together, somehow society will break up. Is there any foundation to that? Well, I, I think not. I mean, I think that unless you, uh, the best way for society to break up is to do a poor job of educating. Yeah. I think the better you educate the population, the, the more stable the society is. And by, you know, lots of measures, there are places uh, all across America, uh, United States and Canada, where there are children who are not getting a good education. And so that system ends up getting defended, uh, at least in the example you cited, on the grounds of, you know, social stability, when in fact, uh, if it's producing kids that aren't educated, it's, it's doing just the opposite. Mm. The last question. Are we making much and, progress here? Are we actually, I mean, the, the idea of choice in education, I've got to tell you, in Canada, it's not really been advanced now for some years. People are very frightened of it. Any change in the U.S.? Yes, well, the U.S. Uh, is changing. Uh, you know, I, I would describe it as a, a, a barge that has to turn around 180 degrees, and we're about three or four degrees into the turnaround. So the movement tends to be in our direction, but it's very slow, yeah. and we haven't uh, gone very far yet. Just, uh, uh, well, earlier this week, there was a Louisiana Supreme Court decision that overturned the funding mechanism for school vouchers. It was uh, one of only a few states in the country where you could use public money for private schools. Bobby Jindal, the governor there, had championed this uh, program, and the Supreme Court, the, 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 in a 6-7 to seven decision in Louisiana, overturned that, saying, well, it's okay to do it, but you've, you can't fund it from the public uh. school pot of money. You've got to pass additional money. So, so that was a setback. But largely in the U.S., yes, there's progress. We have double-digit growth in charter school enrollment every year still. We have right. homeschooling okay. growing at double-digit growth. Online learning is exploding. So there's a lot of progress. Right. You actually have a group called Society for Quality, of Edu Quality Education we do, yeah. uh, in Canada that uh, that, that promotes uh, this concept as yeah. well. And, uh, and so I would urge people to check them out. Okay. Bob, we should have more time. Thank you very much for what we did have. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks, Michael.